Hi everyone, I am Dr. D. Srinivasa, Senior Gastroenterologist. I bring greetings from Bangalore Institute of Digestive Sciences in North Bengaluru. Today I am going to speak a little about fatty liver and its newer terminologies. What is this fatty liver? Content of the liver is more than 5% more than fat in the liver cells, then we call it as fatty liver. It is a very common finding nowadays and especially it is uh, more common because a lot of people do a lot of health checks and uh, ultrasound of the abdomen or the liver function tests which are done as a part of the package in the health packages shows fatty liver. This fatty liver is very common. It can affect uh, uh, anywhere between 10 to 40 percent of the Indian population depending upon the region where we originate from and depending upon our dietary habits. Why is it important? This is because the, now the commonest cause of liver transplantation in the western countries is uh, because of uh, cirrhosis associated with fatty liver. If you can uh, look back a few decades back, the, I mean few years not even decades back, it was alcohol related liver disease and uh, hepatitis C related disorders which are the commonest causes of liver transplantation in the western countries. It is not that we are lagging behind in this, I think we will be overtaking the western countries in this. Uh, our commonest indications were hepatitis B, alcohol, now even uh, I think uh, fatty liver disease also has um, caught up with uh, the hepatitis B and alcohol and uh, now it's one of the commonest indications for liver transplantation. The term has been changed from fatty liver to metabolic associated steatotic liver disease because this can happen in lean patients also and it doesn't tell us that there is some metabolic dysfunction associated. What are the components? The term metabolic associated steatotic liver disease uh, includes a few components. There should be some metabolic dysfunction in the form of either uh, glucose intolerance, bar diabetes mellitus, dyslipidemia, hypertension along with accumulation of fat in the liver. So this is metabolic associated steatotic liver disease. Then there are two things. There is uh, with inflammation and without inflammation. So if there is uh, no inflammation, it is, it is called as metabolic associated steatotic liver disease. At present, we are assuming that it is simple and may not be very important progress or the prognosis, but things might change. At present, we believe that simple MASLD, that is MASLD, is okay because the population, as I said, about up to 40% of the population in, in India have this disorder. Then the next thing is MASH, that is metabolic associated steatotic hepatitis. You can see the difference is there is inflammation in the liver. How do you know there is inflammation in the liver? That is by liver function tests. The liver function test, especially there are two enzymes called transaminases. So when there is inflammation, there is elevation of the enzymes in the liver function test. These are called as transaminases. These are uh, SGOT and SGPT or they alternatively called as AST and ALT. This will be abnormal which indicate that there could be inflammation going on in the liver. It is not that every person in the uh, health check who has got a transaminitis that is elevation of these enzymes has got fatty liver. You need to rule out other causes especially viral causes like hepatitis B, hepatitis C and there are certain inborn errors of metabolism also which need to be considered before we assume and attribute this enzyme uh, elevation to fatty liver or metabolic associated steatro hepatitis. See what is the importance of MASH? See uh, the thing is when there is metabolic associated steatotic hepatitis it can lead to permanent damage of the liver called as cirrhosis of liver. How does it happen? In, in usually inflammation leads to you know damage and repair. So this produces scar formation which ultimately leads to cirrhosis of liver and cirrhosis liver is actually a sort of a pre-malignant condition. It can lead to liver cancer or hepatocellular carcinoma. Is it very common? See actually there is a rule of 20% which we can understand. 20% of the population has got fatty liver that is MASLD. 20% of this MASLD progress to MASH that is MASH. 20% of this MASH progresses to cirrhosis and 20% of this progresses to liver cancer. See don't get alarmed. It is not that it is going to happen over uh, months or years. It takes decades to uh, uh, develop you know from mass to cirrhosis and cirrhosis to decompensation is uh, like you know cirrhosis to decompensation maybe five to ten years and liver cancer also can develop better than cure so how do we prevent or reverse fatty liver one is by diet second is by exercise third is by 
weight loss diet is very important diet like you know we should know both what we should take what we should not take and when to take so the thing is like there is something called as a circadian rhythm we have to eat according to the sunlight so if you are eating your dinner early by 6 pm then the fatty liver uh, chances are less in fact there is a uh, tribe in tanzania who actually hunt uh, animals and they have non vegetarian meals in fact they hunt animals so in fact they do eat uh, rich food or even red meat once in 20 days but the rest of the 19 days they eat only tubers vegetables and greens so in this population fatty liver diabetes and heart disease is almost unknown so please understand that you know you need to have a lot of vegetables fruits and you have to maintain the timing because since there is no electricity in the stripes they finish their dinner by 6 pm so one is when to eat second thing is what to eat what to eat is you should take you can take complex carbohydrates what is what is this complex carbohydrate include which include millets which uh, unpolished rice like you know brown rice or red rice and uh, uh, whole grains you should not use any processed food you should avoid maida uh, as, as a part of the diet and you should avoid too much of fat in the diet and take adequate number of, adequate amount of proteins in the diet should have a lot of green uh, leafy vegetables in fact what they say is there should be uh, uh, variety in the food both in the color and consistency because you should have a wide the more wide variety you have the better it is for the liver and the gut health second thing is exercise exercise it should be about 45 minutes to uh, one hour uh, daily at least five times a week it, this should include both aerobic exercise and weight training exercises simple weight loss aerobic exercise can be enough but especially patients with liver disease tend to lose ma uh, muscle mass so to build muscle mass we always require weight training so it has to be a combination of both aerobic exercise and weight training uh, one more thing is weight loss is very important in this uh, aspect one can understand that even fibrosis where there, uh, there is damage and the scarring of the liver if one loses 10 percent of weight there can be a reversal of fibrosis in up to two third of the population so prevention and further uh, you know uh, maintaining and even uh, reversing is what we should look into because don't just look at the bad aspects of fatty liver you can see the good aspect is that it can be reversible with weight loss with certain medications maintaining healthy lifestyle which includes diet exercise adequate amount of sleep and uh, avoidance of stress mm -hmm.